Trevor Milton, the founder and former executive chair of Nikola, went on trial starting this week, charged with lying about the company's products to mislead investors and prop up the stock. Let's In this video, it's finally time. Trevor Meltdown Milton, the real, real founder of the real, real company with real, real products that aren't a pusher, Nikola faces trial on charges of securities fraud and multiple counts of being a dumb motherfucker. Okay, maybe I made the last part up, although I think that's true. We're gonna see the Dunning-Kruger effect in full action and I'll be covering the entire trial because I've been waiting for this moment for more than two years. And so the, the truck is for the profit, the semi-truck, the pickup truck's for the consumer. And the consumer's the one who is part of the Robin Hood portfolio, is part of the, the, you know, the family office or whatever. And that's where all the, the valuation of the company comes from. Uh, am I imagining things here? Did he just imply that the only reason that they created the Nikola Badger was to get Robin Hood investors to invest in Nikola's stock? That actually just actually, that really actually legitimately actually just happened. Everyone looks back and they're like, man, I wish I could have gotten into Tesla at $30 or $40 or $50, right? But here's the thing. If you were to be, if you were to be in full production right now, our stock would be 10, 20, 30, 40 times what it is now, in my opinion. This is a chance for everyone to finally get in prior to the thing going nuts. Is it possible that Trevor is actually executive stock pumper, not executive chairman? I really am getting the feeling, totally unscientific, I know, the feeling that Trevor's primary role is literally to pump up the stock price. There's probably been very few companies in history that have as much upside as we do this is going to be good. And before we get into it, if you want to instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10 year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. Trevor Milton, the founder and former executive chair of Nikola went on trial starting this week, charged with lying about the company's products to mislead investors and prop up the stock. Let's get back to New York and Bloomberg's Ed Ludlow, who was in court today for the first stages. Ed, what happened? Yeah, so Trevor Milton faces two counts of securities fraud, two counts of wire fraud. And, and you're right, Em, that prosecutors have to prove that A, Trevor Milton lied about the company's technology and its products, and that in so doing, he misled investors and also Therefore, the investors made the choice to invest in his company, Nikola, based on that information. So the prosecutors must prove that Trevor Milton lied about Nikola's technology. I mean, pretty sure that's a done deal. If you guys haven't seen the history in this, do some digging. I mean, that is an absolute shoe in It's definitely got nothing to do with any of the comments about the real, real truck that wasn't a real, real truck and rolling down a not real, real truck down a hill, pretending it was a real, real truck, moving under its own propulsion when it wasn't, lying about producing your own inverters when you don't, literally putting tape over the brand that actually produces them, pretending they're your own technology. Yeah, definitely didn't happen. So the prosecutors are gonna have a very hard time proving that Trevor Milton lied about Nicholas technology. And the second thing to prove is that in doing so, some extremely dumb, yes, extremely dumb retail investors, one more time, extremely dumb retail investors bought Nicholas stock based on these fraudulent claims about their technology. This is where I cue some clips from August 2020 and a few maybe later as well, in which I miraculously somehow two years ago, in fact, more than two years ago, was literally saying out loud, I believe that this guy is misleading and deceiving investors with the sole intent of pumping up the stock price and luring in dopey retail investors. Now, here's a question. If some dickhead on YouTube who was literally high when he recorded every single video about Nikola was saying, Hmm, this guy appears to be pumping up the stock. This guy appears to be deceiving people simply to get the stock price up. If this guy could make literally 30 plus videos on this company explaining that he's pumping up the stock price, in my opinion, <laughs> I mean, I don't think the prosecutors are gonna have a hard time proving this. Like I said, I'm just some idiot on YouTube and I saw this from a mile away. I literally made more than two dozen videos. Every time it's the same shit. Uh, these products aren't real. I don't think they're even gonna try and make them. I can't make this up. It'll be interesting to see if some of these videos turn up as evidence in court. You see, here's the thing. I cannot envision a scenario excluding incompetence and or corruption on the part of the judge and or jury in which Trevor doesn't get absolutely fucking ruined. And the very fact that some idiot on YouTube was able to make videos pointing out what he was doing, pumping up the stock price, luring in dumb retail investors, making fraudulent claims, in and of itself, it's a done fucking deal, in my opinion. I seriously think the prosecution could just play my videos and the case would be closed. Of course, <laughs> Time will tell. I'm actually gonna play a few historical clips from around two years ago, some more than two years, some a little bit less, just to prove my point. This really matters. Sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the show. What I did is I knew day one, you know, once once we started coming out, we had all this gravy train coming in from the semi-truck program. 
my, my question was, okay, that's great, but I'll never touch the average consumer. So therefore 90% of investors will probably never invest in me. So I needed to touch the consumer. And so the, the truck is for the profit, the semi truck, the pickup trucks for the consumer. And the consumer is the one who is part of the Robin Hood portfolio is part of the, the, you know, the family office or whatever. And that's where all the, the valuation of the company comes from. Uh, am I imagining things here? Did he just imply that the only reason that they created the Nicola Badger was to get Robin Hood investors to invest in Nicola stock? That actually just actually that really actually legitimately actually just happened. I'm going to watch that again. Once we started coming out, we had all this gravy train coming in from the semi truck program. My, my question was, OK, that's great, but I'll never touch the average consumer. So therefore, 90 percent of investors will probably never invest in me. So I needed to touch the consumer. And so the, the truck is for the profit, the semi truck, the pickup trucks for the consumer. And the consumer is the one who is part of the Robin Hood portfolio, is part of the, the, you know, the family office or whatever. And that's where all the, the valuation of the company comes from. This just sounds so wrong to me. Guys, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm overreacting. But for the founder, the ex-CEO, to be explaining that the primary driver for them creating the Nicola Badger, their commercial pickup truck, it wasn't to help displace gasoline and fossil fuel burning diesel pickup trucks, etc. It wasn't to change the world. No, 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 no. It was to attract the 90% of retail investors who wouldn't care about the company otherwise because who cares about semis? By the way, full credit to Trevor. The plan itself, absolutely brilliant. If you don't believe that retail investors are going to be interested in your company sure create some renderings for a product you apparently will be selling in the future or will be revealed at nicola world in december of course that's a great way to get attention to lure in i mean to draw in these new investors great plan trevor thanks for sharing august 2020 this guy stunned that trevor meltdown milton had just admitted out loud the reason they created the nicola badger computer renderings not an actual product was to pique the interest of the retail investors the robin hood crowd this is what happens when your IQ is 69 and you think it's 169. I cannot believe at the time this, I mean, I literally couldn't believe at the time he'd said that out loud. I literally said it, I couldn't believe it. Now here we are. You know, at the end of that clip, I said, thanks for sharing Trevor. I knew I'd be coming back to this clip and <laughs> talk about incriminating oneself. So again, I mean, prosecution needs to prove that Trevor Milton was making statements, false fraudulent statements to lure in retail investors. Maybe even inventing a fake truck that didn't exist, making some computer renderings, hyping the entire thing up just to get the interest of the retail investors. I mean, <laughs> this is not looking good for Trevor Meltdown Milton. You'll never make it as an OEM if you don't build your own battery. That's the most critical part. Prior to going public, I told my board, I'm, we're gonna go public. And they said, not a chance, you're an idiot. And I said, listen, you gotta understand, you gotta prom you gotta just trust me, we gotta go public, we need to. And, uh, and they said, no, never. But then you sell $70 million in shares at that same time. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so how do you, public, I mean, that's something people were really critical of. Like, why, if you're so long the vision, would you take $70 million off the table in, you know, at, before the products even launched? That, that was a red flag of red flags for me and for others. But let's just consider this for a moment. The founder, the ex-CEO of this company, has taken out $70 million of cash by selling shares and bought a house. And the company hasn't generated any revenue sold any products, even manufactured any products yet. This captain is definitely not going down with the ship. And they said, we'll buy some of those shares from you so you can live on this. So you're not focused on money during the time that you are running this company. We want you to have some money out now, it's smart. And we want you to focus on Nikola, not focus on how you're gonna pay your bills or pay for your house or whatever else. I got, got cash. Right. So there is zero risk for me to do this. It just, it's a big commitment, but it's no risk. It just means I would lose my my huge, you know, my, my nice nest egg. Right. But I've already got my house paid for. I got my things paid for. Like, I'm okay to take that risk. I believe in the company. It's all right. Hey, look over there. A big distraction. Hey, don't worry about our production not happening. No, no, no. Shh. Hey, uh, look at this. They're all real. They're real, real trucks. We got real, real products. on. They're real, real. Don't touch them though. They'll break. But they're real, real, real. Huh? Yeah. Oh, man. I just, I can't. Sorry, guys. I'm calling it a day on this video. Red flags for days. Now, for those that don't know, Trevor Meltdown Milton actually sold a ton of stock in Nikola and bought the most expensive house ever sold in his state ever sold in his state before the company had generated a cent of revenue. In totally unrelated matters, I'm not sure why I would mockingly repeat real, real truck when referring to computer renderings of an obviously not real, real truck that I personally never believe the company intended on actually producing. It's definitely a coincidence I was repeating real, real truck when laughing at this Nikola Badger. Let's move on. I'm gonna be discussing some promotional clips recently released by Nikola Motor Corporation regarding the Nikola Badger, the most exciting, amazing truck the world's ever seen, but it hasn't actually seen it yet. Now, just in case anyone missed it or you're just listening audio only, I want to read the title of this video, Unchanged since the day it was posted in October 2020. 
Nicola, is Badger a fake truck to manipulate the stock? I mean, it's in the fucking title. Of course, I mean, it was just a lucky guess. Or no, actually, they definitely intended on producing the Nicola Badger. I was wrong at the time. I misinterpreted what they were doing. It's just a coincidence that they never actually ended up following through and making that product. Because they definitely planned on making that product. I definitely believe that that's true. I'm Heavy D, and as you may know, I got fined nearly $1 million because I was helping to modify vehicles in such a way that polluted the environment so much it was absurd. And now I'm obviously a great partner for this company, Nikola Motors, with this clean energy zero emissions future that they've been harping on about because um, that's what Tesla did and they want to catch some Tesla investors and uh, allegedly, in my opinion, do your own research. Let's continue. Well, as they say, never trust a guy with three first names, especially when he's making videos two years ago pointing out that the Nikola Badger has been created to lure in some Tesla stock investors. That was total coincidence as well. The fact that they've never actually made the truck that Nikola World was cancelled and Trevor Milton is no longer the CEO of the company and is now on trial charged with securities fraud is a coincidence. It's safe to say I know a thing or two about trucks. Just in case any of you missed that, Heavy D is a proud shareholder of Nikola stock, which might make him the sole proud shareholder of Nikola stock on earth, in my opinion. Which is why, when my longtime friend Founder and executive chairman of Nikola Motor Company, Trevor Milton, approached me and said, Hey, Heavy D, I've got a big bag of cash with your name on it. Let's build the world's best pickup truck. You can imagine I was a tad skeptical, but now my eyes have been opened. I've seen the technology. That must make Heavy D the sole person on planet Earth who has seen the technology that Nikola allegedly doesn't have any of, hence the GM deal and so on. In my opinion, do your own research, blah, and blah, blah, blah. Did this YouTube dickhead just insinuate that Nikola didn't actually have any of the technology they were claiming was in the Badger? Nah, you imagine that. The Nikola Badger is unlike any truck in existence. Man, Trevor is throwing so many softballs, I can't maintain my composure. Yes. The Badger, a truck that isn't in existence, certainly is unlike any truck that is in existence. Well played, Trevor. It's a fair point. Let me be the first to tell you that this man is not exaggerating. This man is not exaggerating. This man is not exaggerating. I'm so confused. Could somebody watching maybe explain why the guy that edited this video had that guy repeating, this guy is not exaggerating over and over while zooming in as if to suggest maybe that he was exaggerating? I don't know why you would edit a video like that. It's just so strange. I don't understand. And who better than you guys to help get that following, that social media following? For those of you who don't know, Trevor Milton has very publicly stated the entire reason that they developed the Nicola Badger CGIs <clears throat> um, was to lure in um, or attract, or I'm not sure what he said in his exact terminology, please do your own research, something words to this effect, was to bring in the retail investors into the Nicholas stock because otherwise they'd never care about the company. And now we're hearing about this, which, um, spoiler alert, I think this entire promotional video was actually to bring in some more of those retail investors to pump the stock just between you and me. This motherfucker again with these unfounded claims, just completely ridiculous claims that Nicola and the Badger was just to pump up the stock price. This guy's a conspiracy theorist. Next, he's going to tell us that the earth is spherical. Badger journey starts now. We're going to pull back the curtains and show you everything we've got. Hell yeah. Can't wait to see the Badger. Bring it out, boys. This is a journey that we're all going on together. And the best part is you can now reserve one of these Badger trucks for yourself. I, uh, I, I noticed that they, they didn't show the truck after they said that um, they were going to show us everything they've got. But they, they did tell us that you can pre-order the Badger though, which is, that's very important. Go pre-order your Badger. Make sure that they've got some revenue for their future legal fees when the whole company falls apart, in my opinion, do your own research, blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. It almost seems like this dickhead on YouTube was insinuating, oh, they'll show us the Badger. Oh, wait, no, they didn't bring it out, that the Badger didn't exist. And for some strange reason, he said something about make sure you keep the deposits for the Badger so you can pay for your future legal fees, which obviously was a very silly comment to say because there's obviously no legal troubles at all relating to the Badger and Trevor Milton and any of the claims that were made in this promotional video. So I hope they didn't take my advice of putting away some of that money for the legal fees that they won't need during the trial that isn't happening right now. No matter who you are, what lifestyle you live, the Nikola Badger is truly for you. That's right. No matter who you are, no matter what your needs, the Nikola Badger is the truck for you. Go pre-order now. Nikola.com slash you're not going to get your money back. Don't do it. Was that another cheeky way of insinuating that the Badger wasn't a real truck and would never be produced and therefore the deposit you're putting down for the truck that's never going to be produced would, uh, no, definitely not. Let's move on. To be able to win over a skeptic like Heavy D with the Diesel Brothers was very expensive. Look, talk is cheap. We can sit here and tell you about all these great ideas all day long, but specs, well, they don't lie. 
This is breathtakingly ironic. Yes, talk is cheap, and that's all Nikola Motors have done from day one. All talk, no walk. However, the specs don't lie yet. Yeah, totally. No prototype exists. All we've seen is computer-generated images. Won't go into production for a few years. They haven't even got a partner produce the thing. We've since heard about the GM deal. They don't have any of their own... Blah, blah, blah. No, yeah, we can definitely rely on these specs. Please tell us more, Heavy D, about these specs that don't lie about this unreleased product that's coming to market in the future with the disclaimer that the specs may change before it gets to market. Read the reservation page, do your own research, allegedly, blah, 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 blah. Let me know in the comments below. Do you believe the Nikola Badger specs will live up to the hype when it ends production? Actually, I've got a better question. Do you believe the Nikola Badger will ever enter production? Wait, you know what? I've got an even better question. Do you believe Nikola Motor Corporation will even be in existence by the time the Badger is scheduled, 2022, to enter production? This guy is absolutely unbelievable. Can you, the gall to ask a question such as, do you believe the Nikola Badger will ever even enter production? Oh wait, here's a better question. Will the company ever be in business? This definitely wasn't somebody attempting to avoid any issues with defamation or libel. Hoping people would read between the lines here. Maybe that comment about the company not existing had nothing to do with any potential fraudulent statements that were being made. The guy was just high and didn't know what he was talking about, obviously. The Nikola Badger is a whole new animal in a league of its own. Well, I can't argue with that point. The Nikola Badger certainly is in a league of its own, also known as the league of totally made up bullshit specs that don't actually exist. It's a fucking CGI, guys. You've got to be kidding me. It's all bullshit, in my personal opinion. Do made up specs? doesn't exist it's all bullshit this guy's just obviously a deluded tesla fanboy and that's why he's saying these things about nicola <laughs> sorry to break the flow here but i'm just thinking back to some of the brain dead comments in the videos that i was making about nicola at the time literally you're just a fucking elon fanboy get elon's out of your mouth you fucking fanboy i'm trying to alert people to the red flags and that was the response from many of the Nikola stock investors who got so butthurt and triggered that I was asking questions that that was a very typical response. I did get through to a few people though, thankfully, but not all of them. Then again, as I continue to say, the bell curve is real. It's impressive. <laughs> it is. I don't know what else to say. I'll tell you what's impressive. The fact that people are still buying Nikola stock and the company's worth like nine fucking billion dollars today as I record this. And by the way, I just want to be super clear regarding this Dave dude. I'm not implying, I do not believe that he has any idea what's going on behind the scenes at Nikola. My suspicion is they went, hey, what's up, Dave? We want some of your street cred. Come here. We'll throw you a few beans, bit of cash, bit of stock, whatever. Here's some tech. Look, there's a battery pack on a bench. See? Here's a video of our truck rolling down a hill under its own propulsion. See? Totally legit. Here's a prototype. Totally legit. Great. Cool. Let's go. So hypothetically, just hypothetically, guys, purely hypothetically, let's just ask the question. If your goal was to create a product that would entice and lure in retail investors who got excited about your stock, people that either hate Tesla or miss the boat in their mind, they think they can't buy Tesla stock because it's already gone up a lot. If your goal was to attract the attention of these types of retail investors, you know, the Robin Hood investor, so they say, that kind of a crowd into your company, into your stock. And if your intent was solely to do this to elevate your stock price and not really to actually make the product because it makes sense for your business model, but solely to draw in these investors. There he goes again with his conspiracy theories. Hypothetically, if your goal is to pump up the stock price by making a fake truck, I mean, why would you even ask this question out loud? It's not as if that's what they were doing. Would it be a reasonable strategy to drip feed information about this incredible, mind-blowing, almost unbelievably specced vehicle, the Badger. There he goes again, I can't believe this guy. He accentuates unbelievable as if to imply that the specs weren't real because they weren't real. Huh. Can somebody report this guy for misinformation and cancel him? Just call his boss up and get him fired. Would that not be a reasonable strategy if your goal was to just pump the stock price and you didn't really intend on potentially ever releasing this vehicle? If the primary goal is to pump the stock price, can you believe this Elon fanboy? If the goal was to pump the stock price and maybe not actually even make the vehicle, I mean, can you believe this guy? I just can't believe that he would say these things. He must be an Elon fanboy. That's the only explanation. All in on Tesla stock, more like Elon's all in your mouth. Would that be a fair strategy? Would holding events like Nikola World be a reasonably effective strategy to generate more hype, more media coverage, and get more retail investors, unsuspecting retail investors, involved in your stock? Just asking the hypothetical question, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. December 3rd, 4th, and 5th is when Nikola World goes down. Wait, you mean that Nikola World coincidentally falls onto the same month that a bunch of your existing shareholders finally are able to sell their stocks because their lockup agreement ends and they can get out of this stock?
What a coincidence. And hey, I'm gonna give some uh, hypothetical credit here. If just for example, that this situation, you know, lots of insiders are able to sell their shares starting December 3rd, allegedly, do your own research. If that was the case, what better way to ensure that not only is the stock up at that point of time, but given that all these insiders may potentially be selling their stock, lots of stock going to the market, right? Driving prices of the stock down. And that might take a few days to dump all of that stock because you can't do it in a single day. Your stock will literally crater. It's just insane. You've got to do this over a period of time. What better way to counter that downward force on the stock price than to have a three-day hype train event to cause all those silly retail investors who don't actually know what the hell they're doing to go buy a Nikola stock at the same time that insiders are dumping a lot of it. Hypothetically, that would be a pretty damn smart play. We're gonna do some fun side-by-side -side comparisons, and the goal here is to show you how real that truck is. And our goal here is to show you how real that truck is. That's a very interesting thing to say, Trevor. I'm very confused. Why would this guy, this dickhead from Australia on YouTube with three first names who you should definitely not trust, keep accentuating things about how real the truck is? It's almost like when he's joking about how real it is, what he's really inferring is that it's not real. But um, I don't actually know what he intended when he made that video, because I'm not him. Now let me explain to you why you should reserve one of these Nikola Badgers right now. Hey, we need the stock to still be up in December. There he goes again with his fucking stock pump comments. Fucking Elon fanboy. You'll get to see the Nikola Badger in person at Nikola World in December of this year. B. We need to hire a social media expert who can illegally take down videos on YouTube claiming we have copyrighted content that they're using that doesn't fall under fair use and try and silence our critics and later be called out for it and then suddenly have to retract and go, oops, why did we do that? Now everyone's looking at us again. Why did we do that? You will have a chance to win a Nikola Badger. All reservation holders automatically get entries to win one of the very first Badgers off the assembly line. Dude, I'm so hyped. Are you hyped? I'm hyped. And see, we need all the money from the pre-order deposit so that we can put that aside for our future litigation fees. Imagine that, more comments about future legal fees, as if this guy knew that they would be in trouble for doing things that are illegal. Like, you know, committing securities fraud, making fraudulent statements, luring in dumb retail investors. Now, I know this video is getting astonishingly repetitive, but that's actually the point. We heard earlier in the intro, the Bloomberg reporting, the prosecutors need to prove two things. One, the Trevor Milton is full of shit. I mean, done f***ing deal. And two, that the bullshit that flowed from his mouth, an endless torrent, to be clear, resulted in some very dumb retail investors buying the stock. The reason I keep emphasising bullshit, aka fake specs, fake truck, won't actually exist, blah blah blah, and emphasising stock pump, retail investors, and so on, is because they're the two things that the prosecution needs to prove before this dick, I mean, before this extremely upstanding human being gets completely f***ed and justice is served. If I can dig through just a few highlights of just a couple of videos I made on this, where the two key points that the prosecution needs to proof are repeated over and over and over and over, I think it's fair to say that most people whose brains work can probably already predict the outcome of this case. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts, Trevor. There's probably been very few companies in history that have as much upside as we do. Let me ask a question, controversial, but we just gotta be honest here, we're all grown-ups. Well, actually, we're not all grown-ups, but I don't care. You're all mature enough to be watching some dickhead who swears a lot talking about Tesla, so I'm gonna assume you're mature enough. Just imagine that you have an IQ of maybe 80, 85. Again, I'm not trying to be disparaging, I'm just being honest here. There are people who spread out on the bell curve of intelligence. Just imagine you've got an 85 IQ. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. Still capable of feeding, clothing, housing, and probably maintaining a job. But you know Einstein. And you hear this guy, this smooth talking, <laughs> charismatic at least if you can't see the red flags, genius who can out Elon Elon in his own words, describing that Nikola, the company, as in the stock, has more upside than potentially any other company in history. You have a little bit of money saved up. You think, oh geez, more upside than any company in history? They're gonna change the world? They got better technology than Tesla? Nikola Badger's a real, real truck? I might invest in this stock. This was Trevor's target market. People about one or two standard deviations above where he sits on the bell curve. What's been your experience uh, as a public company? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Look, it's a little frustrating sometimes, but I'll, for other people, not for me. And, and it's, this is how I look at it. You know, everyone looks back and they're like, man, I wish I could have gotten into Tesla at $30 or $40 or $50, right? But here's the thing. By the way, split adjusted, he's actually talking about Tesla stock in the 2 to $3 range. Really, the insinuation here. A lot of people missed out on Tesla at 2 to 
Again, today it's over $300. It's insinuating a gigantic increase here. I'm not sure exactly what Tesla's worth when this was recorded. Probably insinuating about a 40 to 50X, maybe even more. I mean, <laughs> hello, Trevor. You can't say this shit. Dunning-Kruger effect on full display. If you were to be if you were to be in full production right now, our stock would be 10, 20, 30, 40 times what it is now, in my opinion. That's my opinion. I cannot guarantee that. You cannot be serious. Like, you you just cannot be serious. Like, we're talking more valuable than Tesla. Do the math here. Nikola today is worth, as I'm recording this, $16.5 billion, 10x at 160 billion, 20x at 320 billion. You can keep going, right? This is absolutely preposterous. I've got my crazy theory, right, guys? Are you ready? I'm gonna start giving a few more details throughout the video. Here's the first clue. I think maybe Trevor's role is not really executive chairman. We'll see more about this soon. So this is a chance for everyone to finally get in prior to the thing going nuts. Is it possible that Trevor is actually executive stock pumper, not executive chairman? Seriously, 12th of August, 2020. Nicholas stock, pump and dump, investor warning. Guy says in the video, is it possible that Trevor Milton's role is executive stock pumper? Hmm. Going back to the two things the prosecution needs to prove. Yeah, they're going to have a very hard time proving that, aren't they? Trevor's definitely walking away a free man. <clears throat> Let's think about this a little bit more, guys. Trevor Milton now, all he is doing is appearing in the media. He wasn't on the earnings call, which is a good thing, because if he said some of the stuff that he says on CNBS, he would be in trouble with the SEC for sure. He's doing a great job at pumping up the stock. Did anyone notice that? thing that popped up on screen there. I think it said Nicola is in the stock ticker NKLA and then Fluffer. Does anyone know what a Fluffer is? Does that have anything to do with pumping up? I don't understand. I don't know what Fluffer means. Like I said, I could be hallucinating here, but I really am getting the feeling, totally unscientific, I know, the feeling that Trevor's primary role is literally to pump up the stock price. If anyone's keeping score at home, I think that's the 420th time something to do with pumping Nicholas stock has occurred in this particular video. So I actually enjoy it because I always tell people, look, everyone talks about how they wish they could have gotten in early. We have... $10 billion in backlogs with our with our Class 8 trucks. That is an extraordinary claim. So let's dig a little bit deeper and look at Nikola's 10Q form recently lodged with the SEC. I'll put a link to this 10Q form in the description. I just want to be really clear. I'm not trying to catch them out. I'm not trying to twist words around here. You guys can read the form in its entirety. I'm not being sneaky here. I'm just reading literally what is in the 10Q form, okay? Heading, reservations for our trucks are cancelable. Let's read more. Reservations are subject to cancellation by the customer until the customer enters into a lease agreement. At times, we have indicated that if we were able to sell or lease every truck which has been reserved, we would have 10 billion in projected revenue. Because all of our reservations are cancelable, it is possible that a significant number of customers who submitted reservations for our trucks may cancel those reservations. Let's continue. There is a heightened risk that customers that have made reservations may not ultimately take delivery of vehicles due to potential changes in customer preferences, competitive developments, and other factors. As a result, no assurance can be made that reservations will not be cancelled or that reservations will ultimately result in the purchase or lease of a vehicle. And it gets even better. While we currently have a contract with Anheuser-Busch to lease up to 800 Nikola 2 fuel cell electric vehicle trucks, if we are unable to deliver our trucks according to the vehicle specifications and delivery timelines set forth in the contract, Anheuser-Busch has the right to cancel its order for trucks. Moreover, the Anheuser-Busch contract specifies lease terms and rental rates that may be hard for us to meet depending on our ability to develop our trucks and hydrogen network according to current design parameters and cost estimates. So that was an extremely long-winded technical way of saying this $10 billion in orders are literally all cancelable based on things like Nikola not delivering in time, not meeting specifications, other factors, okay? Trevor is out there talking as if these are done deals, they're locked in, there's certain contracts, etc., giving the impression that they're absolutely jacked to the gills, so much revenue coming in in the future, it's absurd. Then we read the 10Q. We just signed up you know, over a multi-billion dollar order with Republic on our, on our refuse, you know, for refuse trucks. We have our Nikola Badger coming out with an OEM. There's probably been very few companies in history that have as much upside as we do. We've assembled one of the best teams in the world and that's what's helped us get here so fast. It's not about me. I definitely am a visionary, there's no doubt. I always, I, I love to see into the future. I love to, to uh, fix complicated problems. I love to vertically integrate or even, uh, um, 
just look at supply chains and look at how we can possibly make these better. So we decided, I was like, you know what? I wanna, I'm gonna do a different business model. I'm gonna partner with everybody. I'm not gonna do anything myself. I'm gonna partner with everyone. Why does the company have such a good name? Why are we? Why do we have so many people rallying behind us? It's because we're the only group that's really thought out the entire process, vertically integrated from beginning to end, where there's no, there's very little risk in the in in our model now. So rather than uh, you know us, where we don't have any factory experience, we're getting the best of the best to come in and actually do it for us. It all the risk we have is in execution. That's really it. The technology's there, the business models there, the profitability's there, the revenues there. All this stuff is ready to be executed on. The only thing we have to do is is just the execution and that's it. I'm going to partner with everybody. I'm not going to do anything myself. It's because we're the only group that's really thought out the entire process, vertically integrated from beginning to end. Well, I'm going to partner with everybody. I'm not going to do anything myself. It's vertically integrated from beginning to end. Well, I'm going to partner with everybody. I'm not going to do anything myself. Did you not spot the inconsistencies there? Now, these interviews happen within a month or two of one another and totally different message. Does that mean that Nicola completely changed their business plan like that? Did a 180 out of nowhere? Or is it more likely that the things that come out of Trevor Milton's mouth a more poetry than information, more creativity than reality. Soon, I'll be announcing when we're going to show off the Badger to the whole world. And this thing is insanity. It is the most beautiful truck I think the world has ever seen. It's a fully functioning vehicle, inside, outside, HVAC, everything, you know, windows, everything, all of it works. I shouldn't say all of it. I'll probably have a couple pieces on a break on me, but hey, <laughs> it's, uh, that's part of the process of building the truck, but it's a real, real truck. It's not just some mock-up thing that other people have done. This is a real, real truck. You hear that? It's a real, real truck because Trevor said so. And obviously, if he's repeating that it's a real, real truck and for some interesting reason, explaining why every component in the truck works, including the HVAC system, everything, the windows are real. That's not a red flag. You can believe everything he says, and you should definitely have bought Nikola stock when he was out there explaining that the Nikola Badger, which has been canceled, surprise the fucking price, was a real, real truck. When you buy our truck, all your fuel is included. You just pay us cost per mile, and we make that three quarters of a million dollars in revenue for Nikola. That's one reason why I think that Nikola is one of the greatest companies ever built, is because we don't just make, you know, hundred hundred thousand dollars on a truck sale in revenue. We make nearly ten times that. We'll make a million dollars ish, seven fifty to a million dollars on every truck sold in revenue. Oh boy, I tell you what, Trevor is very relaxed with his numbers. Did you see how easily seven hundred and fifty thousand was almost fluffed up to a million, an extra thirty three percent like that? Infer, guys. This isn't necessarily a good sign. You want some specific, clear, exact numbers, not vague this, oh yeah, re numbers, specific. This is important for investors. Almost all the Tesla fans that have been studying Nikola have become huge Nikola fans. A lot of them are uh, really believe that Elon is like this, this great person that can do anything. And it's when they see someone else being able to actually beat him at what he's doing, they, they hate that. It's so- <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it did actually happen. Trevor Meltdown Milton in an interview, suggested that Nikola was outdoing Tesla, although he was referring to Elon making it personal, almost as if some narcissistic tendencies there. After all, this is the same guy who's claimed he can out Elon Elon, literally suggesting, I mean, in no uncertain terms, that Nikola had outdone Tesla. And again, if your IQ is, I don't know, one or two standard deviations below average, you hear this, oh my god, he must be Oh, we're gonna buy Nikola stock. Can't lose. Look, we're not getting into the cars. We do, we do trucks, we do, you know, huge semi-trucks all the way down to medium duty trucks for business like the Badger, uh, you know, the stuff. We only focus on markets that actually create revenue in, in any economy. And so I, it is a huge picture. There's no doubt. There's very few people that can out Elon in this world and that, and I'm, I'm one of them. I, I have no problem with him. I think he's a, I think, you know, what he's done is awesome, but there's uh, it's, it's kind of hard when, uh, you know, for his followers to see someone that can actually build something bigger or, or, uh, um, or more competitive than what he has. So that's, that's why we get a lot of that hate sometimes. We're the only ones in the world can do vehicle to vehicle charging right now that's been integrated into our software. So it's, you can actually export energy from, well, I shouldn't say we're probably not the only one. I, someone may have created something, but we're, we're the first ones for sure, where you can actually pull power off of the Nikola Badger right to your jet skis, top them off again and go out for another couple hours on the lake. What? what? The Badger, they don't even have somebody to build the Badger yet. They haven't... How, how can... Oh, man, guys. The more I think about it, the more I hear these comments again, 
On reflection, a couple of years later, claiming that Nikola's built something bigger than Tesla is in the companies more successful, bigger already than Tesla, claiming they're the only company that does vehicle to grid, and then corrects himself, well, maybe someone else has done it without mentioning, oh, wait a minute, I'm talking about vehicle to grid on a product that doesn't exist. We've only got computer renderings, it doesn't actually exist. He's claiming we're the only ones that have done it. Then he corrects himself, trying not to get himself in trouble. But again, when you've got a 69 IQ and you think it's 169, well, you better not say that because someone else has done it. Claiming that you've done it, yet you don't have the fucking product you're claiming can do it. Hearing these comments again makes me realize I think there's a high probability that Trevor Milton's defense are going to say, you know what? The guy's literally insane, he's deluded. He's got a mental illness. He doesn't know what's going on. He's disconnected from reality. That's why he said the things he said. No person who isn't suffering from severe delusion could possibly say these things. Therefore, he's insane. He's not going to jail because he didn't know what he was talking about because he's nuts. Seriously, let me know in the comments below. Think they're going to go with the insanity defense? I think it's a probability. How about the, the Nikola Wave, the jet ski, watercraft, whatever they want to call it. Awesome. Cool. So they got the zero dollar reservations. Cool. Let's see this thing in action. I mean, it looks pretty slick on the outside. Could be pretty cool. Nice high-end toy. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, nice design. Here we've got a great shot of it in the water, not being used. Here's a really nice close-up shot of the exterior, not being used. But here's the back of the, the jet ski or watercraft, uh, again, not being used. Why does this dickhead on YouTube keep saying not being used? Like, I don't understand. Like, is he trying to insinuate it's not being used because it doesn't exist and that's why he can't use it? I totally don't understand what he's trying to insinuate at all. <coughs> cool. Nice close up of the logo and the lights not being used. Hmm. I'm noticing a common theme here. Oh, here we go. Thank fuck. She's oh, finally. Okay. Sorry. I was. Wait. That's the start of the video. You. They did. They did just do that, didn't they? This is this is not a this is vaporware. This thing is not being used. This is not this doesn't exist. No wonder the reservations are zero dollars. It's, it's not a real product. I mean, maybe it will be in the future. That'll be really cool. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's scroll down. Let's see if we can see some. Maybe there's some in-use shots down here. At least some photos. Uh, not being used. 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 Hmm, and we're at the start again. Okay, well, let's see the specs. Infotainment industry leading display, cool. Hopefully we'll see a shot of that soon. Storage, bow to stern tunnel, that's great. Hull and deck manufact, what? Wait, that doesn't even make sense. They, this is like a template they downloaded off the internet and they just had to put some words there because they didn't even know how to delete this point. Hull and deck manufacturing, what the f Like this is a product you manufacture and it has a hull and a deck. That's the strangest thing. Lights, headlamp and tail lamp, cool story bro. That's it, that's, holy f they don't even have any spec. That, there's not even a picture of the infotainment display. It wasn't even in the video. Holy fuck. Okay. Look, let's give them a fair chance. Maybe maybe that was because it's the, at the end. Let's go to this one over here. The Nikola NZT. So this is like an off-road vehicle, right? Yeah. Cool. Here we go. That's a real thing there. Although there's a bit of magic going on in the headlights, but we might get to see this used. Oh no, they're not. Oh, they're not doing it again, are they? F*** me. Yeah, here we go. Let me guess. A bunch of people outdoors near their Nikola device that is not in use because it doesn't f***ing function yet because it's vaporware. Let's have a look down. What else? Maybe we've got some specs here. Cool. Lots of torque, some horsepower, 150 mile range. That's not bad for an off-road vehicle, I guess. Four seconds, zero to 60 time. Cool. Some stuff about suspension, infotainment display, waterproof, instant torque. Okay, cool. That's excellent. Oh, here we go. We've got a, This is Photoshop. For those of you that can't tell instantly, this just doesn't match. The scene doesn't match the lighting. And these wheels have an effect on them for motion blur rather than actually being blurred from a camera shot. So this is not in use. It looks like it is though, but it's not. Here we've got a not being used. That's a photo. That's a real photo of a real product, but it's not moving. I mean, cool. Close up. Great. Here's another photo of it not actually moving. Let, let's see some more of the specs. I mean, I don't really care about the charging. I wanted to learn about this, the product itself, okay? Zero to 60 time of four seconds, up to 150 mile range with a couple of asterisks. I don't know what that means. Maybe because it's the conditions of the off-road. That's cool. Uh, let's have a look at the... What? They have a 125 kilowatt battery. That The Model S has a 100 kilowatt battery. Zero to 60 in like 2.3, 2.4 seconds. 402 mile range. I mean, off-road, it's a little bit tougher. I get it. But this thing must be much smaller too. It must weigh a lot less. $80,000. So it costs the same or more as a Model S. Oh, fuck. okay, and this isn't even a real thing either. There's no, there's not, not even one picture or video of it being used. I'm a little bit concerned, guys. Let's go to Trevor in the media. Maybe he can change my mind. Joining us now is Trevor Milton, founder and executive chairman of Nikola Motors. Welcome back, Trevor. Great to speak with you. 
Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Mondays when reservations open up, what are you expecting? Uh, I'm expecting a lot of fun and a lot of excitement. So we've all been waiting for this for a long time. Nikola finally allows people to make paid reservations for the Nikola Badger. It's the coolest electric truck, pickup truck the world's ever seen. So um, yeah, it's a big day on Monday. And uh, and also those reservations turn into um, tickets for Nikola World happening in December when we show off the Badger. So it's just a, the next four or five months is just gonna be a, a, an incredibly fun time. You mentioned it's the coolest pickup truck the world has ever seen. The world hasn't really seen it, has it? Trevor, no. I mean, at, at what point will, will the world actually see a truck and one that can operate as opposed to seeing mock mock-up pictures? Because that's that's really the question for a lot of analysts and investors. They like the long term vision. They see the total addressable market is very large. The potential is very big. But then they go back to you guys have not made a truck yet. Well, a couple of years later, they still haven't made the truck that I personally believe they never intended on producing in the first place. What a fucking surprise. And now, back to the present moment. He arrived Monday morning, Southern District of New York here in Manhattan for the trial, which was supposed to take place in, Ju in July, but Judge Edgardo Ramos granted the delay until September 12th, Monday, so that they could take on that fourth count of wire fraud. It's a five-week trial, so we started Monday with jury selection. Tuesday, we expect opening arguments with the prosecution having around three weeks to present their evidence, and then the defense will come in. And the burden of proof is on the prosecution here. This trial could run for around five weeks through to the end of October. And as I say, the focus for the prosecution is convincing the jury that A, Trevor Milton lied, misled investors about the company's progress, its technology, what it had actually achieved, but also the investors, retail investors in particular, were moved or motivated to invest in the stock for that reason. You'll remember at its peak, this was the poster child of the 2021 SPAC wave of EV companies that went public via SPAC. And at one point, it had a market cap greater than Ford. Things are very different now, Em. Can't fucking wait. As I mentioned, I'll cover this trial in detail. I've been waiting a couple of years. I knew this time would come. I didn't make those 30 plus videos for nothing. Many things I said there now I've revisited today, sharing a little bit of the nuance, the intended meaning. Let me know in the comments below. What's gonna happen? Is Trevor Meltdown Milton gonna end up in prison? Will there be a settlement? Maybe both? Will he rat on everybody else to try and reduce his sentence? Assuming there were other people that knew what was going on. <clears throat> and one final thing I just want to make sure that everybody understands, please don't ever trust anything I ever say ever because I'm always wrong about literally everything. Now that we've cleared that up, I just wanted to say if you'd like to support the channel and this guy who's always wrong about everything, you can do so by joining Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. All Patreon members at all levels gain instant access to well over 100 exclusive videos, loads of other content and perks, including instant up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets out over the next decade. So I'll see you over on Patreon. And Trevor Milton, if you're watching my friend, I never did go clean that beach. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Even you, Trevor. <laughs> but you're still a fucking moron. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel and instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10 year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. Please let me know your thoughts on today's video in the comments below and click the card on screen now to watch the next video.